Good morning, my brethren. It is Thursday. Thank God it's Thursday. I'll say that instead of thank God it's Friday. <laughs> I don't really say that, but anyway, I thank God for every day. I'm going to work again today, another couple of days, and then I'll have another three days off, which I look forward to always. I don't have to get a lot of time in the mornings to read, but I found this article, and I believe I can work on this article this morning and tomorrow morning and maybe even finish it on Saturday. But it's called uh, Paul's Great Outlook. And does he, did he not have a great outlook, just like us, an expectation? Our Apostle Paul, he had the greatest of all expectations such as we have right now, today. Okay, Paul was essentially a seer. And as one of the divinely chosen penmen of sacred literature, he stands as the seer of the greatest vision. His was the outlook upon, immeasur upon the immeasurable, the glimpsing of the sumless treasuries of grace, and the joyous walking in the widest and profoundest ways of divine wisdom. Called to preach and set down a particular and progressive message, his credentials are the best. To me, he says, less than all, less than the least of all saints. Let me read that again. To me, less than the least of all saints was the grace was this grace granted to preach the evangel of the untraceable riches of Christ to the nations and to enlighten all as to the secret administration which has been concealed from the eons in God now this position of the apostle paul is no disparagement to the illustrious line of prophets and apostles who preceded him indeed he is in line with them as to, as to Israel's destiny, but chosen and called apart for a wider commission. Therefore, he was as one extricated, not only from his own people, but from the nations as well, to stand uniquely alone as a minister of the ascended Christ. He, he thus stood and still stands as the penman who visualizes the glories of Christ. In the, superl in the superlative degree. The character of his call prepared him for so special a stewardship. Was he not deprived of eyesight that oblivious to all but the ascended one, he should have that precious insight which afterwards enabled him to write so glorious a treatise as the Roman, as the Roman epistle? And what writing? It has been called the cathedral of the believer's faith. But is more than that, for the vistas of grace revealed by the apostle need no dim religious light to enhance their appeal. The qualities which lend themselves to the construction of such a masterpiece are of an order in keeping with the effulgence of Christ. Beautiful as may, B, a granite or marble edifice, the outbreathings of such a mind as Paul's is more of the open moorland or mountain steep. To him, desert and wayside meant more than temple. For like the psalmist, he would again and again exult in the preciousness and depth of God's thoughts as coming like the free air of heaven to his consciousness. How precious are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. Psalm 139, verse 17. In like manner, the apostle would re revel and perceive, and as he perceived, he proclaimed. Being therefore so sig signally commissioned as the bearer of truth to the nations was sure was what surer guide can we have as a teacher of the simplicities of faith he unfolds as no other the value of the things of the spirit the things not made with hands yet so essential to the faith which relates to us 
and God was real to him in ways ineffably sweet. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. I will continue with this tomorrow. I love you all, and I pray that you have a wonderful, wonderful day in the Lord.